You know, it's pretty self-evident that life is, has got its rat's nest of miseries, and that's for sure. Maybe you could even make a categorical statement that life is mostly a rat's nest of misery. You know, and you could make a pretty powerful argument for that. But then there's a counter question, which is, well, what if you tried not to make it any more miserable than it had to be, right? Then what, then what would it be like? And my suspicions are is that a lot of that misery, I would suspect that most of that misery would go away because it's the unnecessary misery that really brings you down. You know, it's like, well, if someone has cancer, it's like, that sucks. But it's not like, it's not like you can say, if only we had done this differently, then that wouldn't have happened. But when someone's out like torturing you in a malevolent way, or maybe you're doing the same, you can always ask yourself, well, is it really? Is this really necessary? Is this just like a useless add-on to the miseries of life? That's what disheartens people. And so even in your own life, if, if, you, if, if you aren't suffering from self-imposed misery, and you're only suffering from inescapable misery, maybe you could handle that. And you know, you could, you could survive, you could bear it. And, and even maybe without becoming irredeemably corrupt so the goal would be well yeah life is a rat's nest of miseries and maybe it has no ultimate meaning we could say that if we're feeling particularly pessimistic but it still leaves one question open which is if you didn't do everything you could to make it worse how good could you make it be and the, the least answer is well it, it could be tragedy but maybe not hell and, and I think that's right I really believe that that's that's the most pessimistic proper statement the worst case outcome in the worst of all possible worlds is that your life could be tragic but not hell and that's a lot better than hell right it's, it's and you think i could give you an example of the difference you're at your mother's deathbed well that's tragedy here's another scenario you're at your mother's deathbed and all you you and all your idiot siblings are arguing well that's the difference between tragedy and hell and you might be able to tolerate the first circumstance and maybe it would even bring you closer together with your family members the second one no one can bear that. You walk away from a situation like that, sick of yourself and sick of everything else too. And you know, it's often the case that tragic circumstances bring out the dragons because the stress is high and all those things that people haven't dealt with, they don't have the energy to repress and, and all the bitterness comes pouring forward. It's like, seriously, man. So that's actually a good, it's a rough lesson, but it's a good hallmark for figuring out whether or not you're you've got yourself adjusted properly and in relationship to your siblings it's like if you were all gathered around the bed of someone close who was dying could you manage it and if the answer is no it's like well put your life together because it's going to happen and you should be the person who's there that can do it and do it properly and then maybe you'd find that it isn't the sort of thing that will undermine your faith in life itself and I've seen, I've seen both of those situations, you know, ugly, ugly, ugly situations, you know, murderously ugly situations. And then they're opposite where people have had terrible things happen to, happen to them as a family. And, you know, they pull together and they rebuild their damn ship and they sail away. So that seems to me to be a lot better. I don't care what sort of psychotherapist you are, you're always teaching them the same thing. You're the thing that can, you're not, you're not the plan. You're the thing that can confront the obstacle to the plan. And then when you know even further that the obstacle is not only an obstacle, but opportunity itself, well, then your whole view of the world can change because you might think, well, I've got this plan. Something came up to object to it. It's like, it's possible that the thing that's objecting has something to teach you that will take you to the place where you develop an even better plan. That's a nice framework to use. It's like, are you so sure that this is a problem? Is that the only way that you can look at it? Or is it an opportunity? I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, naively optimistic. There are some things that's pretty hard to extract gold from some dragons. Maybe the death of a family member is a good example of that. But in, even in a situation like that, I can tell you that it's an opportunity for, it's an opportunity for maturation, that's for sure. And the thing is, you might say, well, it's pretty miserable to go, to be digging for gold when someone's falling into the grave. Well, if they really love you, first of all, that's what they'll want you to do. And second, you're gonna make their death a lot more palatable experience for them. If you're someone who can be in the room and be helpful instead of be, you know, quivering in the corner and feeling that the entire world is collapsing in on you. I mean, that's another, you wanna be the useful person at the funeral. How's that for a goal? That's a good goal, man. You know that you've got yourself together in a situation like that, because you're gonna be at them. 
And maybe you want to be the person on whose shoulder people cry. That'd be a good goal. It's kind of, you know, I don't like being naively optimistic. So when I tell you to get your life together, I'm not going to say roses and sunshine. It's like that's 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 pablum for fools. But it really is something to be the reliable person at a funeral. Right.